Okay, let's see how many you can remember in a couple of minutes. So the transferring from short-term memory to long-term memory, uh, we know really quite a lot about it. And, and the main reason why we know so much about it is these two people. Uh, first of all, it's uh, the patient, H.M., uh, who is uh, really a, one of the most well-known patients at all in uh, the scientific literature. Uh, he was so unfortunate uh, to uh, suffer from epilepsy as a young man and therefore had surgery where they removed the parts of the brain which were involved in uh, generating the epilepsy. So this is his brain and you can see which part has been taken off. Uh, this is the hippocampus and other areas in the uh, medial part of the temporal lobes. Uh, so you can see that this is what were uh, basically removed. Uh, you can also see it up here. So the basal part of the brain uh, was uh, s removed through surgery, which was enormously effective uh, in uh, curing his uh, epilepsy. So I, I believe that he didn't have a single epileptic attack uh, since this was done. Uh, the problem then is that he also suffered from uh, uh, lack of memory uh, or lack of ability of in establishing uh, any uh, new memory since the surgery. Uh, so he had what you could say intact working memory, intact short-term memory, good ability at actually remembering things for a short time. But his ability to remember what happened an hour ago or a week ago, a year ago, was completely gone after this. His long-term memory was also relatively intact. So he knew who he was. He knew where he was born. He knew more or less everything up to about one or two years prior to uh, the surgery. So relatively intact, long-term memory, intact, short-term memory. His problem was transferring short-term memory into long-term memory. So basically, he died a couple of years ago, but uh, he has no knowledge of who has been the president of the United States of America since then. Uh, he had no idea of uh, the changes that had taken place afterwards. So no idea of uh, cell phones, computers, anything uh, uh, taking place this uh, afterwards. You can imagine his uh, experience when looking at himself in the mirror in the morning and seeing a rather old man where he expected to see a very young man. Uh, and this caused some confusion for him. Uh, but luckily, he would forget it in, in a, some seconds afterwards and not be worried about it anymore. So he was relatively content. It was not that it sort of was a major problem as such for him not to have this ability. He didn't experience himself that he was losing anything much because he had no memory of losing anything. So from that point of view, that there were things which disturbed him certainly, but not for a very long time because then he would have forgotten it again. Uh, and that's sort of, a, I think, an interesting philosophical thing. Um, we're going to have one of the groups uh, going through his story and, and coming up with more uh, details about it. So I'm not going to go through it very much, just to emphasize again that uh, the hippocampus in this area is really important in, in transferring uh, memory. So it's not a memory storage side as such. It's an area which sort of is responsible for uh, making sure that what we remember at the short term is being put down into a long-term memory storage. The part of what we experience that we want to remember or that we need to remember at a, uh, uh, for a longer time. But this only goes for the declarative uh, part of our memory. And this is one of the main reasons why we're able to dissociate declarative memory from the non-declarative memory. Uh, so what Brenda Milner, who is the physician who has followed 
uh, H.M. Uh, through his whole lifetime, uh, well, at least since he got the surgery, uh, did a very simple experiment on him, which is shown down here, basically to ask him to do mirror drawing, so looking in a mirror and trying to uh, draw a star like this and staying within the boundaries which to begin with is really, really difficult, but if you train it uh, for some time, you become very much better at it. So this is what HM did on the first day, uh, about 30 errors, and then after the 10th trial, he goes down to just under 10 errors. And the interesting thing is that he comes back on the third day here, no, second day, sorry, and he performs quite a lot better than he did in the beginning. Uh, he starts out with 15 errors, quickly becomes better and, and relatively low, and on the third day he hardly makes any errors at all. So he becomes very much better at doing this motor task, but he has no memory that he has done it before. Uh, so when asked, he would claim that he has never been doing any such task before, he has never tried to make a drawing in using a mirror, but he learns how to become better at it. So there is a clear dissociation between what he reports in his declarative memory, what he remembers uh, declaratively, and what he can actually do. So his brain has learned, but he himself, what he can report verbally, has no recollection of it. Um, so just to make clear also, it shouldn't say aphasia, which is a completely different thing. It's amnesia. Uh, would be the correct term here. Aphasia is a uh, lack of language. Uh, this is lack of memory, so amnesia rather than aphasia would be the correct thing. Uh, this is just to point out that uh, we have retrograde uh, amnesia, uh, which is basically that we may forget everything that uh, we have learned up to a certain time. This is uh, usually a sign of very, very severe affection of most of the brain. This happens in elderly subjects who get Alzheimer's disease, uh, where you see degeneration of large areas of uh, the cerebral cortex and the brain. Uh, and it also happens in some cases after uh, uh, injuries, severe injuries to uh, the head. Uh, short term, well, not short term, but retrograde memory, which is not complete, but which is sort of uh, happening a year or two in relation to a major injury or major affection of the brain, is the most common uh, to see complete retrograde uh, memory losses, uh, much more uncommon. Anterograde uh, means uh, lag of ability to establish memory following uh, an accident or, or following some injury to uh, the brain. Uh, and it's much more related to the ability to uh, create memory, so the learning process, more than the actual storage of the uh, memory. This is uh, quite common to see if you have had a brain concussion following an accident or whatever, that during that immediate time uh, you lose memory of uh, what actually happened. Uh, it's relatively easy to induce anterograde uh, memory loss. You can just drink a lot of alcohol and you will sort of uh, lose that ability. Um, but it's not